Dieu commus, a phrase in France. In the French language, this translates to trade being panacea to major ailments. Today's 21st century, with the globalized scenario, translate to similar philosophy and the similar condition practically. Because trade has been dictating terms to relations of many countries and it is reducing the conflicts. Also, the sanctions in trade is enabling conflicts newly created. So, even Indo-Chinese condition is no different. Today, let's look at the scenario of trade between India and China and what implications can it bring to India. Indo-Chinese trade as concluded in the financial year 2023 and 24 is of 100 billion dollars. But out of this 100 billion, Chinese exported to India around 100 billions. And this 100 billion is offset by only 20 billion Indian exports to China. So, no country would like to have such huge trade deficit. So is India. Effectively, they have a trade deficit of 80 billion dollars. So, what could be the implication of this? Before going to look, look at that, let's slightly look deeply into why were these imports increasing. And more, moreover, is it an unilateral increase of consumption goods? Can we reduce these imports or at least attempt to curb or put sanctions or some other means? The answer would be an absolute no. Because among this 80 billion dollars, the scenario is that most of the imported goods, predominantly pharma and IT sector needed them because with value addition, they could export further. From here, we would arrive at a crucial question, whether every import is treated equal as an impact creator. For this, if you answer, as we were discussing about pharma and IT sector, let's start with a similar example. An IT company needs laptops or any other semiconductor devices, maybe mobile phones, or projectors something else they would import from China but they are input to their productive work and that would enable the company and the organization to export services IT being revenue garner and huge Forex inflows are due to IT sector and this IT sector is dependent on China for its semiconductor. So, though we have imported laptops of China or mobile phones, they are acting as an industrial good to IT sector which produces services. Let's take another example of pharma sector. Indian pharma exports are huge and by volume at 6th and 12th, I think, by price. This pharma sector is dependent on active pharmaceutical ingredients, which is actual formulation of drug. And this is produced again in China and imported to India. This would form the similar input to the pharma industry. So these kind of imports are inevitable and they were rising humongously. Either we need to focus on manufacturing in India in the long run, which would take at least a decade. This might be taken as a parameter to success of making in India probably. So these industrial inputs have increased by 21%. This is largest chunk that is contributing to sharp rise in imports of India from China. So what could be the implications? 
the implications are far beyond the economic scenario. Of course, we would have a current account deficit of 80 billion every year, considering the present trend, which is very huge. So the forex that earned by India from other countries would be spent towards China. Along with that, as Chinese are known for the debt diplomacy, this debt diplomacy can bring them a huge power of negotiation. So the economic boost which China gets through its debt diplomacy, this debt diplomacy is tilting even the political power in international arena towards China. This is exactly what's happening towards an India-China relationship. Along with this, Indians need to compromise on its exchange rate. Please visit the video of Need and Read to understand this exchange rate impact. So, this exchange rate could create a trickle effect because current account deficit in a country with no full convertibility would create depreciation of rupee. Again, I would repeat the same point. Current account deficit of a country with partial convertibility, which is not full convertibility, would depreciate its forex reserves and depreciate its exchange value. So these implications would create a magnifying effect over the years. So what could be the solution? The solution is again not a blunt yes or no towards the curbing the exports. The first solution is to create a knowledge economy or skill because it's manufacturing of industrial goods that is lacking in India. So the success of Make in India matters a lot today. Second is to bridge the gap of industry and academia which is again part of this. We could also look at we could also look at the scenario which is favoring China that is an exchange rate and huge surplus of debt creation. India could effectively target the MSME. This MSME could become tomorrow's big companies and they could reduce this trade. And this MSME can't be a randomized one. We need to replace the alternate goods. It should be towards semiconductors and active pharmaceutical ind ingredients for which we will need a policy which could target capital goods. To summarize the whole story, we need a capital goods policy which could effectively reduce imports from China. Though we could reduce the consumption goods, capital goods imports become inevitable because the value which we add in another industry and export it to other country can't be made uncompetitive. So the solution to produce these capital goods indigenously could actually be a panacea. And that panacea could create the dual commerce which we discussed at starting of the video and empower India even politically in international arena and of course economically as trade deficit would be reduced and that would favor India. Hope you understood these implications of the current scenario. You could comment your doubts below. For more information video, please follow the series. Thank you.